Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we're going to formally discuss Python comparison operators. And we actually mentioned these at the very end of your previous assessment test. Hopefully they were pretty straightforward, but in case they were a little confusing, now we're going to formally dive into them and show you how you can return back Boolean values using comparisons. Let's open up a Jupyter Notebook and get straight to it. All right, so here I am at a notebook. And before we get started, I want to briefly mention that in the comparison operators notebook that goes along with this lecture, it's underneath the comparison operators section, there's actually a table of comparison operators, same table from the previous assessment test that has the operator, the description, and then an example of it. So let's get started. Basically gonna walk through all of them. Should be pretty straightforward, a little quick lecture here. Often you're going to want to check for equality. So to do that, it's just double equal signs. So two equals two run that, and that's true. If we check it out on something else, for example, is two equal to one, we get back false. And the reason we have two equal signs is because we don't wanna use a single equal sign, otherwise Python's gonna think you're trying to assign a variable there. And you can use this not just for numbers, but basically any objects. So I can check is the string hello equal to by, and if I run that, it says false. And notice when you're comparing, when you're comparing strings, capitalization counts. So you can't do something like this. And that returns false because one is lowercase b and one is uppercase b. And you should also be aware that Python is going to consider types. So for example, the string two is not going to be equal to the number two or the integer two. For floating points, as long as they hold the same value, they will be true. So 2.0 is going to be the same as two. So that's equality. For inequality, you can use the exclamation point equal sign. So if you're going to say is three not equal to three, well, that's false because three is equal to three. And let's show you an example of where it's gonna return true. So is four not equal to five? That returns true. So we have equality, we have non-equality or not equal. We also have greater than, so I can say is two greater than one? That's true. Is one greater than two? That's false. We all, then we have less than, so basically the reverse is two or is one less than two, that's true. Is two less than five, that's also true. And then we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So I can say is two greater than or equal to the number two. In this case it's true because they're equal to each other. And then we can do a similar thing. We can say is four less than or equal to, for example, one, and that's false. And you can see a bunch of other comparisons right here in this notebook. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. A lot of times what we're really going to be using is the equality. But coming up next, what we want to discuss is if you want to make more than one comparison at a time. So, so far, we've just been comparing two numbers or two objects, so two and two, one and zero. But often, you're going to want to do multiple comparisons on the same line. And to do that, we're going to use uh, something called logical operators, which will allow us to chain together comparison operators. So we'll discuss that in the very next lecture. I'll see you there. Welcome back everyone. In the previous lecture, we learned about comparison operators. Now we're going to discuss how to chain together different comparisons. And we can do this with the use of what are called logical operators, and they allow us to combine comparisons. And the key logical operators we're going to be discussing here is the AND keyword, the OR keyword, and the NOT keyword. So let's explore how to use these keywords, as well as chaining comparisons without the use of these keywords. All right, let's imagine that we wanted to have a condition that executed when we actually did two comparisons. For example, we wanted to check if one was less than two, and we also wanted to check at the same time if two was less than three. So you can imagine that instead of these direct numbers, we'd be using variable names that maybe get changed somewhere else in our code, but to keep things simple, we're just using direct integers. So to chain these two together, what we could do is do the following. We could say, is one less than two, and is two less than three? So when we run this, we get back true because this chain comparison is true and this comparison is true. If we were to change one of these, so for example, if I switch this to ask is two greater than three, we get back false because even though this first one is true, this second one is no longer true. Now you could use this sort of chaining together, but alternatively, you can use a logical operator. And the one you would use to uh, basically rewrite this code here is the AND keyword. So instead of the following from above, I could say is one less than two and, and notice that syntax highlighting there, is two 
greater than 3. And that returns back false as well. And I could switch this to be less than. And then that returns true. So all the AND keyword says is, hey, is what's on my left true? And is what's on my right true? And remember, these could be any sort of comparisons. So I'm going to show you another example. We could do something like, is h equal to h, the string, and is 2 equal to 2? We run that together, and we get back true. Sometimes when people are writing out their code, they like to add in a little more organization by kind of wrapping these comparisons in parentheses. And you'll see me do that from time to time. For some people, this is a little more readable. Uh, for others, it's less readable because you're inserting more stuff. It's up to you whether you want to use these or not. There are certain libraries uh, that we'll talk about later on that do require you to have these parentheses. But for now, it's basically up to you. If you think with the parentheses more readable, go ahead and use them. If you like it that it's a little kind of sleeker without the parentheses, you can go ahead and do that as well. But just keep in mind the AND keyword says it's what is on my left true and is what's on my right true. And then it returns a Boolean based off that. Okay, so pretty straightforward so far with the AND keyword. As you may have suspected, there's also an OR keyword that we mentioned previously, and that just needs one of the conditions to be true. So again, we'll use numbers. We'll say is one equal to one or is two equal to two. So we run that and we get back true. However, the OR only needs one of these conditions to be true. It neither needs the, it just needs the one on the left or the one on the right to be true. So I can show you what I mean by that. I'm going to make one of these definitely not true. So 100 is not equal to one. But if I run this again, notice my cell count, it still says it's true because it just needs one of them to be true. So is this statement true or is this statement true? And if we make them both false, then finally we get back the false. So that's the basics of chaining comparison operators with the AND keyword and the OR keyword. And I would recommend that you use these keywords instead of doing uh, something like this because in my opinion, they're a little more readable. So we always want to stress readability in our code. It's especially good because later on, maybe you come back to your same code a month later, you're going to want to be able to easily read the code. So we just discussed AND and then the OR keyword logical operators. I finally want to discuss the NOT keyword. So to round out our discussion by showing you an example of the NOT keyword, that's N-O-T for NOT, it basically just asks you to return the opposite Boolean of what you just did. So I will construct this with an example first. So one is equal to one, we know that's true. If we wanted to get, for some reason, the opposite Boolean off of that, I could do NOT, and then in parentheses, one equal to one, and it'll return back false. Technically, you don't need these parentheses here, so you could just do something like this, not one equal to one, and you also get back false. It's up to you what's more readable. But all not is doing is it's asking for the opposite Boolean of whatever was returned here. So for example, just to show you again, let's say 400 greater than 5,000. So that's false, but if I put a not in front of it, it's going to now ask for the opposite. So it's going to say true. So not sometimes useful when you're trying to write out your logic. It'll be a lot more obvious when we begin discussing control flow in the next section of the course, but keep this keyword in mind. At first, you won't be using it too often, but later on, you're going to see that sometimes bits and pieces of code become more readable with the not keyword instead of using something like the opposite, which you know would have been just is one not equal to one there. All right, that's the basics of logical operators. Again, main things to realize here is the AND keyword needs both conditions to be true. The OR keyword needs just one or the other to be true. We'll see you at the next lecture.